Hi, this is JP from Know the Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another video about Marvel Champions ACG. And this time I'm talking about my first impressions of the Mutant Genesis box. So let's get started. Okay, and uh, I just uh, finished playing through uh, for my blind playthrough of the Mutant Genesis expansion. And it is a quite good expansion in my opinion. Um, I think it uh, rates up right uh, up there with uh, the Sinister Motives expansion box in, in goodness. Uh, I think every scenario was at least decent, nothing really um, annoying or like not fun to play in there. I think uh, the, the worst scenario must be Sabertooth. Uh, not like it's bad, but maybe uh, it, it is a bit annoying when, when Sabertooth keeps healing up and you just have to uh, babysit the senator all the time. But still, it is an innovative uh, scenario, not, not the worst by any means of the scenarios we have in Marvel of Champions. Uh, the, but, but maybe the uh, least fun out of the box. But yeah. Uh, Opinions may differ, but I didn't enjoy Saber that much. Uh, still, it's an iconic uh, X-Men villain, so uh, without Saber in the box, it, this would be a bit of a dud, I think. Uh, then we have the second scenario, the project uh, Wide Awake, and uh, we have the Sentinels in it. It's really thematic, and it really rings... Uh, brings uh, the feeling of uh, the X-Men fighting these Sentinels. Uh, if, if you have ever watched the animated series that came out in the 90s, uh, from, for example, you can see it from Disney Plus or somewhere. Uh, it, it is an awesome, awesome uh, nemesis to have, like for the X-Men, that they, they have these Sentinels, they are uh, constantly fighting and they get uh, evolved even uh, more, more uh, dangerous all by uh, by each encounter so it feels like yeah, they hit home with the sentinel uh, scenario at the second one uh, uh, it is a bit sword heavy so keep that in mind when playing because i was playing with colossus and i couldn't watch anything in that scenario I, I just tried to bum rush the sentinels down and i i think i came a bit close even though i um, set up colossus a bit uh, uh, wrong because I put the one upgrade in, into play instead into that uh, it comes into your hand during setup. But anyway, um, I, I think it's a it's a decent and really interesting scenario. Uh, next we have Master Mode, uh, which is another <clears throat> Sentinel scenario, but you have a villain you are beating down uh, instead of some Sentinel. Uh, well, it, it is kind of a villain. It, it is a machine that produces sentinels, so again, there are a lot of sentinels in it, and uh, uh, all of the sentinels you need to take care of if you want to hit Master Mold. Uh, Master Mold doesn't have that much HP, but uh, when playing Kitty Pride or Shadow Cat, I could just bypass uh, the sentinels and hit hit master mold and beat beat it down quite quite easily. Uh, so if you deck build correctly against master mold, it should be easy. And if you, especially using shadow cat, it, it should be quite quite a doable uh, scenario. And keep in mind, I'm I'm playing on standard, so I, I have no idea how this box functions uh, with uh, when playing expert. But I, I think I have to try that also at some point. Uh, the fourth scenario is probably my favorite from the box. Uh, it is the mansion attack, and we face Pyro, Toad, Blob, and Avalanche. And they attack the uh, mansion, the X mansion. So you have to defeat, uh, depending on the amount of players, or, or I think it was amount of players. You have to, uh, for, for one player, you have to be two uh, for 
two player, maybe for three. Or I, I'm not quite sure. I'll actually check so I don't talk <laughs> uh, too wrong. Okay, so yeah, uh, it, it wasn't against the player count. It's uh, one uh, villain for skirmish, uh, standard two villains, an expert three villains, and a heroic four. So if you're playing heroic, uh, you have to beat all of these. And they still have like the um, 14 uh, per player, etc. health, and they all start with puff. So I, I really enjoyed the scenario. Uh, the different locations changed the scenarios. Uh, like uh, some some locations gave you retaliate, some locations um, made you st st uh, steady or something uh, or or whatever. But it it was a really uh, you, a really interesting scenario because you didn't know what's coming because the villain is random and the location you start from is random and it keeps changing throughout the scenario. Uh, last up we have Magneto. So uh, Magneto uh, is not the most difficult uh, last boss of these boxes but still a quite quite difficult villain to handle. Uh, but I think uh, again I was playing with the Shadow Cat against Magneto, so I could bypass some some uh, difficulties uh, during play, and I was able to port uh, really efficiently. So uh, you are basically uh, thwarting first the uh, side scheme, so you can start uh, dealing damage to Magneto. After that, when you have defeated the side scheme, uh, Magneto loses steady. And then you can uh, defeat Magneto, and that is it. So nothing really special, but the encounter deck has a lot of uh, like magnetic cards, which are really un annoying. So at at one point I had to go uh, get rid of my obligation, and the uh, encounter deck made me stay in alter ego for two turns because it kept uh, putting me exhausted, so I couldn't uh, ready and uh, get rid of the obligation. But yeah, uh, that is it. But still, um, Magneto is a really, really fun scenario. So I, I didn't dislike anything that much. Sabertooth was a bit um, annoying, maybe, but not not the worst. Uh, not offending like, uh, for example, uh, the Galaxy's Most Wanted. The whole box is just more annoying than S Sabertooth. Uh, quick word about the um, two heroes in the box. So. We have uh, Shadow Cat with the pre-built aggression and Colossus with the pre-built uh, protection deck. Uh, both feel really well made. Uh, I think Shadow Cat has the first aggression pre-built deck that I really like playing. Any other pre-built aggression feels like it's it's really annoying to play through solo and doesn't function. So this this was a pleasant surprise. And Shadow Cat is a really powerful hero. Uh, really interesting mechanics and uh, what can you expect from one of the great uh, FFG designers uh, Maxi Newman who, who designed the Shadow Cat's uh, signature cards then uh, we have Colossus uh, Colossus feels like an interesting uh, multiplayer character I, I don't feel like really playing much with the true solo with Colossus but the tough toughness mechanic and the uh, Pre-built deck made it playable through solo, so it, it functions really, uh, really well. Uh, I was able to uh, actually defeat <laughs> a scenario. Uh, I was playing the uh, mansion attack with Colossus and managed to beat that. So Colossus packs a punch and can withstand a lot of beating. So I, I felt that it, it was a huge uh, pre-built deck. So is this box worth getting if you're not into X-Men? Well. I, I say these. Uh, the scenarios are well, well done, uh, the heroes are well done, and I, I still need to play this in um, um, campaign mode. I, I have no idea how the campaign mode works, but the scenarios in, it, in themselves and the heroes are interesting, and uh, uh, let's face it, I, I have been waiting for the X-Men from the day the, this game came out. Uh, so. I'm really pleased that we are getting the X-Men now, so just uh, hoping to get the rest the rest heroes uh, that are coming in this cycle. 
but look forward to those hero pack focuses from me and uh, gameplay videos. But I think that's everything I wanted to say about this box, so definitely grab this if you are at least a little interested in, in uh, the X-Men and uh, mutants, etc. So hope you guys like this uh, <laughs> quick review video. Thanks for watching and until next time.